these experiments have been reproduced by Provark and Closon. And uh, in 2005, they presented the work in Japan. And if you look at the internet, there are many people trying to do that. Uh, the calorimetry is uh, close to zero. Uh, the power measurement is close to zero. I mean, when they, they showed, because very exciting and very demonstrating of something happening. But this is not cold fusion. They say it's cold fusion, but I, I have many doubts about what they are doing. So the objective was to increase the pressure and temperature. So if you increase pressure and temperature, as you know, OK, uh, maybe I have to go back a little bit. We work at boiling temperature of water. So at atmospheric pressure, it is 100 centigrade. But if you increase the pressure, then the temperature will go up. So in order to do that, we are, we are, the idea was to go to higher pressure and higher temperature, hopefully in, to increase the, the effect. Uh, we, we have observed, and we, the, the idea was that the plasma density would increase with pressure also. So we have designed a cell in order to study these reactions at high temperature and high pressure. Um, the principle we are using, we have two, we have two problems with in calorimetry, measuring the power in, and the second is measuring the power out. So there are two major problems. So in our case, we, we measure the electrical input with a watt meter, with a sampling frequency of 70 kilohertz. And the uh, heat energy is measured by the loss of water, measured by the weight loss. I mean, the whole system is on this balance, and we measure the weight loss. If you look at the pressure, I mean, uh, if you look at the, the pressure is bars, and the heat evaporation, OK, this is the pressure. Heat evaporation in joules per gram. It varies a little bit with with the uh, pressure and with the temperature. And it's boiling temperature. So if, if we work at one bar, we have 100 centigrade. If you work at five bars, you have 150 centigrade. Now you can go even higher, but so far we have not done it yet. What were the cell specifications? Because we are working with high voltage, high current, we don't want to be electrocuted. So we decided to have a chamber that would be completely Teflon coated. Capable of standing up to 10 bar, that was the specification to start with. And the, temp the corresponding temperature would be 177 degrees centigrade. We were using a scale that were 6 kilograms maximum, so we, added, we needed a weight of less than 6 kilograms. That was the technical for our design. Uh, we didn't want to have any explosion. And also, we wanted to keep the pressure constant. So there is a relief valve that we can calibrate and uh, measure the exact pressure. And to make sure the pressure is correct, we use a mechanical pressure gauge, not electronic, because we want to make sure it works all the time. Never know, you know. <coughs> Don't ask Boeing about it. Uh, uh, then for calibration, there is a resistor that go up to 300 watts to calibrate the system. Okay, here is the schematic of the system. So it's a stainless steel chamber. Uh, dark and gray, it's a stainless steel. And inside, it's a Teflon. <coughs> all, it's all Teflon, actually. The water will not be in stainless steel. You see only Teflon. The cathode is, so far we've used tungsten cathode. We can change the diameter and the length of the cathode. We have used mainly two millimeters cathode. And uh, this is an uh, uh, alumina tube that limits the amount of the length of the cathode that is active. The whole thing is uh, here the Teflon bar that's, I mean, it's a, it's a system to attach the, te the electrode to the flange here, top flange. We can measure the pressure with the mechanical uh, gauge. We have the resistor, resistor, resistance heater here. Uh, the anode is stainless steel foil. And uh, here we have a relief valve with an exhaust for the vapor. This is a view of the system. Oh, good. Our map is compatible with PC in France, you know. I don't know what kind of map you have here. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the top of the 
chamber with a flange, which is also Teflon. Here is the system. So you can see the gauge here. You can see the exhaust. And this is the adjustable pressure and the scale here, sitting on scale. Well, this is a detail of the cathode. And we can see that this is a 20 millimeters active cathode. And we're good at making drawings, so let me explain things. So the cell is sitting on the scale. Uh, the, we have a high voltage, high current power supply. We send it to the cell. At the same time, we have a power meter. I was telling you we can measure the power, the input power. And uh, the whole thing goes into that acquisition system using national instruments. <laughs> it's not crazy. Well, I have to give credit to <coughs> Then you give us, and we pay for it, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Calibration. Okay, what we have done, we measured the, well, because this system has a loss, obviously, you know, because of the, it's not, it, it, it's in the air. So we have measured the loss in watts at different pressure and temperatures. You see from one to five bars. So the loss is uh, in that range. 75 watts at one bar up to 150, 117 at five bars. We have tried, we have changed. I mean, this good thing with this system is that we work at constant temperature. So whatever the power is, the temperature will be constant. So the, the loss should be the same if we change the power. We've checked it a couple of times. We might check it more later. But going from 250 to 300 watts will change the loss. So it makes sense. So otherwise, it'd be a problem. Something else. This is a big, big advantage of this type of design where you work at constant temperature. Electrolyte, we use normal HCO. We are poor people there, you know, we don't use very good cheap things. <laughs> uh, potassium carbonate, dipotassium potassium carbonate, and uh, low concentration of potassium carbonate. I mean, it seems that there's certainly an influence of the concentration, but um, if you put too much electrolyte, then you have to work at high current. And sometimes we like to have higher voltage and less current so that the impact of the ions will be larger. The quantity, the quantity of water is 1.3 liter. The electrode, we used the tungsten thoriated electrode, 2% thorium in it. I don't know if the thorium is really important or not at this point yet. <coughs> So what are the parameters involved in this experiment? There are many. <sighs> That's the problem. When you have multiple parameter systems, it takes years to get to study all of them. The cathode material. In this experiment, we're using only tungsten or tungsten thorium cathode. But in the past, we had worked with other materials. And uh, we tried nickel, but we immense so quickly that you can use it for a long time. Uh, we tried uh, molybdenum, which is a good material because it melts at high temperature. But for some reason, I think molybdenum makes uh, molybdenum hydride at the surface, and that's, that's an insulator. So after a while, the electricity stops completely. There's no current going through the system. So that didn't work. Uh, the electrolyte composition is important, nature of the electrolyte. So far, we have used potassium carbonate. We will try others. And the concentration is important, too. Now, the, the role of the pressure and temperature and the role of this particular system but about the voltage and the current, um, as I was telling you, depending on the concentration of electrolyte, you will get more voltage or more current. So that's uh, another parameter to play with. And also, in this experiment, we have done only DC current, but it is interesting to work with pulsing. The problem why we didn't do pulsing this time is that we realized that uh, our watt meter worked well at constant voltage, just measuring the current. But if you change voltage and current at the same time, you need high quality national instrument system that can sample at gigahertz frequency. 
and we are just sending a message in case someone hears that. <laughs> Who knows? So, but pulsing might be very interesting. What are preliminary results? So, <coughs> we work at constant voltage, maximum 360 volts, current maximum 2 amps, pressure 5 bars. I mean, we, we calculated the system for 10 bars, we tested it to 7.5 bars, but we've seen that the top flange was slightly bent, so we decided to play safe and go only to 5 bars. So in the future, we might modify it so to go to higher temperature and higher pressure. But so far, it worked fine. Now, what are the results we had? We, unfortunately, we didn't have enough time because the concert was so soon, you know? We just finished the other one, the ICCN 17, and now we already <coughs> completed, so we didn't have time to finish everything. But with the, we have measured, with the data acquisition give us the, the numbers on, on a continuous basis, because we measure the weight loss and the power in. So we know exactly what's going on. But you have to be careful with, even though, in principle, this apparatus has a time constant to zero, nearly zero because we are working at constant temperature. It has some time constant because of measurements. So when the, pre the power in changes rapidly, you have to wait a little bit to make sure you have the right numbers. So we found it was better to give a number on the average. And we have done an experiment with a duration of 60, uh, the last is missing at 56 minutes. 56 minutes and um, we got 21 watt average excess, which is pretty good because uh, it was just one of the few firsts we have done so far. So in the future, we'll have more. That's only a COP of 1.05, but um, probably this is just the start. What's the problem? Precision and measurements. The power in is measured with a watt meter, sampling frequency 70 kilohertz, constant voltage. I think it worked pretty well. Uh, we are pretty confident because in many cases we don't find any excess heat at all, so I think something might be correct. The power out is measured with a scale with a precision of 0.2 milligram. That's enough. Now, the, the, the major problem people might point is, is the water coming out dry or wet? That's an issue. If it is wet, then you might make big mistakes. And I have proof that it's not wet. Because if you look at carefully at this picture, and I'm happy it works, you will see that here it's, uh, it's transparent completely. And then it condensates for sure. But that when it comes out of the tube, it comes to dry. Obviously, after a while, it will become a cloud. So I think we have a system that uh, gives accurate numbers. Conclusion. What are the advantages of this type of calorimetry? One good thing is it operates at constant temperature. That simplifies things. The time constant is extremely short because of constant temperature gain. Um, we can change the temperature and the pressure by varying the pressure. We, I mean, the, pre the temperature is related to the, to the pressure. It's not the other way around. Huh? First the pressure and then temperature defined. Potentially, we can get high COP. Or yet, ICCF 19, we get 1.5. I don't know. Uh, and also, why I'm so interested by that experiment that for demonstration purposes, you can ask someone to come and spend one day and have a demonstration. On most of the other experiments, it takes days to get it to start, days to, show, to run. So this one can work very quickly. So it's, if the day we get a good number, we can call people from the Areva or wherever, France making nuclear plants to come and see it. And also, I would please my friend Ed Storms. We can find probably deuterium if there is any, because we, have, we can collect all the water or the vapor coming out and the gases. The, one of the major dis dis disadvantage of that is that the cathode is destroyed during the operation. And, um, because of bombardment of the islands, it just etched away. And so that limits the duration of the experiment. We can run it for a few hours, but not more longer than that. For safety reasons, we start the experiment by increasing the temperature with a resistor. Once we have reached the constant pressure we want to work at, then we stop the resistor and go to the electrolysis so that we don't build up hydrogen and oxygen in the chamber. 
during heating period. Otherwise, it could be dangerous, you know. So we, and once we have electrolysis going on, because there's so much vapor, so the gases will be carried away with the vapor. So it's not that dangerous anymore. <coughs> Am I done? Yeah, I'm done. Oh, wow. I'm too fast. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, question, yeah. <coughs> for original Missouri experiment, did we uh, observe the for that? You are not checking for that? Yeah, we would check for that, for sure. Uh, we would check, I mean, there are different ways you can look at transmutation, on the cathode itself, maybe, and also on the powder that produced and we can collect it. I have to tell you, in one of the previous experiments we have done with a regular at room at atmospheric pressure, it was with a day war, a glass day war, pyrex day war. We looked at the powder and we found calcium in it. So there was no calcium. The only possible source of calcium was the glass of the pyrex. I don't know if there's much calcium in it, but that's what we observed. So um, I don't know. So we changed, we decided to go to other materials. I, I tried sodium instead of potassium, and it's all, all the whole column <laughs> corresponding to potassium. And uh, it's not clear yet. So but this is something that could be interesting, the role of the potassium. Is potassium being changed into something else? Could be true. I don't know. I think Ed would not agree with that, but maybe that's possible. <laughs> but who knows uh, what the role of the potassium is. Yes. Uh, Jean Paul, do you think that with mesonome experiment there's a way to at some point do hydrogen at low cost with thermolysis of uh, hydrogen with high temperature plasma in the, in the cell? I, will, I heard recently that uh, you can find hydrogen in the, in the Earth, you know? I mean, really done. <laughs> it's for free. So now it's too complicated to do cheap hydrogen to that, you know? And uh, the system is really, I don't think there is any, any industrial application to that because the electrode is being consumed with time. Unless you have a complicated design where the electrode will go in and out. I mean, it's, it's feasible, but it's complicated. I don't think it's uh, worthwhile at this point. Yes. Anyone else? I would like to thank you, Jean Paul, for um, having been gracious enough to publish your work through. Uh, Please use the mic because we're trying to record. Okay, the sorry. The recorder can't. We want to hear your signals. Hi. Yes, I just wanted to say thank you very much for being gracious enough to publish your work through quantumheat.org. And uh, if people want to see the designs of the reactor and detailed photographs and videos of the manufacturing process, um, they're welcome to go to the site. Um, but um, good, good start, and I, um, we're really looking forward to seeing how it progresses. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you very much, everyone.